Today we're doing an unboxing and setup review of the Serpcos Hydroponic Grow Kit. Now if you're a member of our VIP club, you will know that this started on a wild and perilous journey, as originally I was going to repurpose my gutter garden and trans transform that into a hydroponic system. But after pricing all the materials I needed in order to make that transition, I found this kit on Amazon to be just under that cost. So I thought, hey, a kit might be a lot more user friendly and plus I can share my experience with you. So this is Serpcos's hydroponic grow kit. This is the 56 plant size version. And at the time of purchase, it was $62.99 and that's US American. As I was pricing out the materials I would need just to try to refurbish my original uh, gutter garden, it was going to be 65 to $70 American. So you can see what motivated me to get this all-inclusive kit. Now, I, it is toted as an all-inclusive kit, but that's not necessarily true. You're still going to need a reservoir bucket, which is basically just a large plastic tote. And many of the reviews said that it was a good idea to upgrade to a different motor to transfer the liquid from the reservoir up into the system and through all the different pipes. Now, because I had purchased my tote and my pump for the system I was planning on retrofitting, already that was price difference didn't really matter because I had already purchased it for both systems so that wasn't an issue for me but let's get to unboxing shall we a quick note about this video it is about to rain probably any second now and you may hear thunder you may hear rain you may hear all sorts of wonderful things such is the life here in Florida, and that's why it's been such a delay to me to get this video out for you. But we're gonna brave it for you and get through this, hopefully. Okay, so in, in opening the box, you can see all the pipes are there, the tubing is there, and the instructional manual is there. Pretty cool. So far, I am impressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this laid out and we will go over the process. So the instruction booklet is kind of cool. It has a colored portion that talks about uh, seedling instructions and how to germinate your seeds to prepare them for this particular system, which I find incredibly helpful, particularly to the new person who's brand new to hydroponics. And then it has a black and white copy that shows the setup for your system itself. It's very simple and it relies more on imagery than it does text, but I, just glancing over it, I don't really have an issue with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move to the location, which is right over there, that I've opted to set this up at, and we're gonna show you a quickened up version of me actually setting this together for the first time with the instructions and then afterwards I will talk about any issues that occurred. Non più dry farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girando, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amore, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amore. All right, so after we got our system set up, we moved our tub into place and realized that our tub's height was a little too high compared to the legs of our setup. So what we did is we found some brick pavers because you can never have too many of these little brick pavers. And we placed them under our feet of our hydroponic setup and it was just right, Goldilocks moment, yay. So then the next thing we had to do was to drill our holes into our tub to, fill, to fit the, um, the different parts that go into this tub. Ideally, you want your tub to be opaque, so that way no light can get in there because that's going to hinder algae growth. 
algae is going to rob the water of oxygen and thus starve out your plants. Sure, a little bit of oxygen is going to be reintroduced from the trickle effect of the water running through the system, but keeping the algae out of your nutrient container is really a good idea. So the first hole that we drilled is this larger one here. And I'm sorry if it's getting really loud, but the rain is picking up again. And I used an inch and an eighth bit that seemed to work perfect for the, uh, the pipe that fits into here. And then back here, we used a 3 8 bit and it was almost perfect. I had to ream it out a little bit with an adjustable uh, tapered bit. And then I got lazy and just used the taper bit to, to do the out uh, hole for the electronics. Speaking of electronics, let's go ahead and open this up so you can see what's going on inside. So there is the motor that comes with the kit. It is a little tiny baby motor, so I can see why people suggested upgrading. But the pipe that connects to the top of the unit connects to the motor, and then the electric is that cord that goes through my other hole. So now that we're all set up, all that's left is to put some water in here, make sure that our levels are high enough to fill over the motor and reach the um, outtake pipe and see if we're watertight. Okay, so we have filled our tub. I have the water level to right here. And as I was feeling this and thinking about it, because I have an opaque tub, I won't be able to readily check my water level, which is something that I want to be able to do. So the addition that I would suggest doing to this is if you can find one of those rubberized caps that easily pull out of something, I would locate that first and then figure out its diameter and drill another hole in your lid for that easy access cap to fit into. So that way you can, with a flashlight if you need to, check your water level and be able to add nutrients rather easily without having to take the whole system apart. That's an optional thing, of course, but it just sounds like an, a good idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and close it back up. What I wanna make sure in doing this is that I don't disconnect my hose from my pump or the pump from the base of the, the tub. Now, this little tiny pump has three little suction cups on the bottom to help keep it in place. So that was kind of cool about that. So now I am going to precariously attempt to put this all back together without damaging my microphone. So I have to lift it up and be careful of my pipe placement because I want to make sure that this pipe fits in that hole as you can see here. So it just slides right in there. So that's why when I picked the bit that I shared with you for that pipe, I want it to be as snug to that pipe as possible, but still be just a slightly larger diameter so that way my pipe would easily fit in there without causing any distress. So this is the prime reason why I selected this location, because this is one of our few exterior electrical outlets. And selecting your location for your unit, you will wanna make sure that you have easy access to that as well. So there is this little panel here that I haven't investigated yet. I wanted to share that with you. It has directions in both Japanese, Chinese. I don't know where this was manufactured. I'm gonna guess Chinese, probably Cantonese, and in English, so that helps me out. It has an on off button at the top here and then it has a, a light lit panel here so it can tell you how long it's going to run so you can change that. I hear noise. I see water. Ah, oh, we have water. It's working. See, water. <laughs> so right now, I believe I have it at 15 minutes working time. So I'm going to adjust that, but right now I'm just checking to make sure that everything is working properly. We have water in the top. 
the second, the third, and the fourth very minimally. So it's slowly working its way down. Now, all these pipes are just PVC pipe. And when we were putting it together, Brian and I were both kind of confused because of the leg pipes. And we're like, if it's just hollow pipe, isn't it just gonna run out the legs? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But they were actually smart. And in the leg sections, they actually have a, a rubber seal gasket inside the junction. So that way it stops the water flow going into the legs and just keeps it in the hydroponic system itself. The one key note about that is if you're going to try to replicate this system on your own by just purchasing PVC pipe at your local Big Lot store, I don't really know where you can find those gaskets. It's an interior gasket. I mean, sure, you can do a solid plug, but then I don't know where they have a junction that has part of it solid and part of it not. So that's something to think about in constructing it on your own. Now I have seen systems where they have the frame as one set of pipework and then the the hydroponics part as another closed circuit pipework within that pipework. That sounds overly complicated and probably going to increase your cost. So this might be the better option for that reason alone. So the the final section now is up to water level, so they're all filled, so that didn't take very much time at all. Uh, I am not seeing any leaks. It's very quiet. The birds in our area are much more noisy than this system is. I am, initially, I'm very impressed, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. I'm, I'm ready to grow stuff. How about you? <laughs> so in the setup of this, I would suggest having a rubber mallet. I found that to be really helpful in getting those junctions more snug. I was aiming to get them as flush as possible at the junctions. I succeeded in some areas and didn't in others. But as you can tell, it's not leaking. So obviously that wasn't as critical as I was thinking it might be. There is no glue in this assembly. It's all dry fit and it's perfectly fine. So if you are one of those people that really want to glue things, sure, you can go to your store and get the, the PVC glue set where it has the prep and the glue and go ahead and glue all of your joints. But you want to make sure you're 100% certain that they are positioned the way you want them. As a dry fit, I can adjust these things. And we did notice that the top a uh, grow station wasn't perfectly level. And so because it's dry, dry fit, I could just scoot it around. And so now it's level and it's all set to go. So with our seedling instructions, what we're going to do is we're going to take the grow sponge that came with the kit and go ahead and germinate some seeds. I'm gonna do that in a separate video and show you my success or lack thereof on how that goes. So look for that. I was also initially thinking that I was going to have to fill the tubs with a, a gravel source or some sort of media, but because they have these net pots that came with the kit, all I have to do is put the sponge, um, once it's seeded in this net cup and just place it right in there. And I don't have to worry about filling the tubs with a growth media. It is optional that if you prefer the growth media method, make sure that you choose a growth media that is a large enough diameter that it's not going to slip through your uh, <coughs> joining holes here. So it has to be bigger than that. Otherwise, everything in here is just gonna get crammed down to the bottom and mass chaos. <laughs> so, first of all, see those people? Those people are part of our VIP club that really helps support this channel and keeps us so that we can continue to give you information such as this. If you've enjoyed this video, look up. There's another one you li might like equally as well.